Hi, David. How are you? I'm good, I guess. Late night. <laughs> we were at the theater last night and did a. We started up again this thing that we did last year. Once a month, we do this thing uh, called Open Workshop. Ah, uh, uh, right. Like sitting in on our workshops, and it's all improv, and I do uh, music for it, per percussion, and it's basically. Uh, hang on a second here. I'm just turning that on. Um, it's basically just, uh, you know, being in the moment and just sitting there and reacting and sometimes pacing it. And, uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Things are good otherwise. Well, on top of that, I mean. <laughs> yeah. It's been uh, relatively busy, which is a good thing. And, uh, great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, how are you? Doing good. Uh, you know, just uh, quite a bit of projects and development. And one I'll talk to you about the at the end of the podcast. Okay. But I saw Xavier just like it ended 20 minutes ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a film. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's pretty intense, huh? I didn't expect things that came the way they showed the, the killings were shown, like especially towards the ending, you know, where there yeah. was off the yeah. the, the off the bus scene. Um yeah. oh boy, yeah. I I I really I I you know how when something bad is gonna happen in a movie and you think, okay, it happened once and it happened twice. And it may not happen third one time because there will be somebody will save the day. Yeah. And with that scene specifically, I mean, there were so many other scenes in the film, but that scene specifically, I did not, ex I was expecting something good to happen. Mm -hmm. And I, I was completely shattered. Like it was a very, very tormenting scene. Like the whole film, I think it was very tormenting. I mean, in, in yeah. a good way, right? Like it's a painful film. It had to be shown in a way in that way because I don't think there has been a film um about the Bosnia um uh, war in the from 1992 1995 that I have seen um, yeah but what a what a crazy movie great movie but obviously on something that people have forgotten about but your music added some great uh layers to the emotions and what I love about, you know, you and I talked about Dead Man Walking and now this, the music only came in when it was nece necessary. Like, you know, not just like having like an hour long soundtrack. Right. And amazing. I I'm still shaking. I think it was a great film and the music was phenomenal. It was, um, it was really something to, uh, to experience. And I, I was with it early on they were still shooting when they brought me on and they flew me over to uh um serbia and uh i stayed for a couple of weeks a week and a half two weeks and basically met the director there and he had basically heard about me i guess from dead man walking and uh saw that and was interested in um incorporating uh the um the feel and the uh, uh, and the uh, music of the country, and uh, which is something I love to do, and just dive into listening to things. And you know, they I had access uh, to the state radio archives in in uh, in um, Serbia in in Belgrade, and it was. Uh, like a kid in a candy store. I mean, it was the there was this woman that was uh, knew where everything was and and uh, uh, played me a whole bunch of things and and certain melodies stuck out and we ended up using two of them. One of them is a is a um, a very famous uh, folk song from the country. Um, uh, well, they're both they're both famous, but uh, they they're well known there and. Uh, I incorporated uh, both of them into the the score, and it was uh, it was quite an experience. I went over three times. First time was to meet and to 
be on set and kind of get a feel of what was going on. And uh, also went to Montenegro, and uh, they, uh, which was, God, it was beautiful there, uh, a, a, a coast town called Budva, and uh, um, stayed there. And, um, and um, but in Belgrade, I did research, and I, I wanted to see if I could uh, record there. And I came back in a second time and uh, set all that, see if I could set it up, basically, because they didn't do things like this like they do in Prague or or in other spots in Europe that were um <clears throat> popular and and uh still cost effective in in a lot of ways um and uh I decided I could do it and I had the funds to do it and uh came back the third time to record and and basically I had uh in that second trip I had found folk musicians from the area um that um i wanted to use and uh was able to found out i was able to to get them and, and use them and there was a this gentleman his name was uh um uh, cornel kovic who's a famous uh composer in serbia and he kind of he came on board and he was like my guru there basically he uh he um connected me with everything I needed and uh and he uh he was there all the time and it, it was like a, a blessing to have him there and third time was uh you know to gather and and uh set up the studio and it was a challenge to say the least mm -hmm. um it was a, a seven you know a, a Soviet era studio and it was you know not used that often uh in those days and the glass that is the partition between the control room and the studio was like all like yellowed from nicotine <laughs> it was crazy and we had to use everything they had to get it going because we used like a, a 60 piece orchestra and um we also um used a choir from the local um area and uh and soloists you know so, solo singer and uh a group of four of a quartet of singers that do a cappella and um were just fantastic and and uh and then uh several musicians from the area you know a uh, percussionist and uh, a flute player who was also like a legend there his name is Bora Dugic and uh and um, um a few other uh great musicians that just lent lended that flavor and um it was uh it was really a profound experience because <clears throat> um you know having seen the cut obviously you know and and having written the cues and all that it was kind of a thing in in similar ways to dead man walking where you kind of had to uh shut down your your emotions at, at after a point you know to basically self protection because you know you could yeah. wallow in it and get lost in it and uh so you know you use that that to um to find the uh uh where the music needs to go and then you kind of have to shut it down just so you can work you know and get it done and uh so it was that kind of a process with that as well because it is a intense uh story and and you know the story itself i mean it it is brutal but it it is the way war is you know yeah it's, it's not putting any sugar coating on it you know and um um the director who also wrote it uh his name is uh, Gaga yeah. Pedrag and uh he uh he was um an activist there and uh um and a filmmaker you know he made a lot of films but he also made some things that got him in trouble and uh you know he he was jailed by the Milosevic uh, uh, people for a while there as well for some of the work that he did in the past. Before the film was made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and actually, we w when this all was happening and when I was there, Milosevic was still in power. And um, uh, it was kind of, there was a lull, but the wars elsewhere in that country were not over yet, you know. And yeah. um, um, the um, the first time I came uh, was literally a few, a less than a week after this whole uh, student protest was happening in the downtown square, and it was huge, and it got violent, and six people were killed. And uh, when I was there, they were doing another pr protest. And uh, uh, one of the people there said, do you want to, do you want to go? And I said, sure. <laughs> 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 so I went and I took pictures and, and I wish I could find those pictures and they're somewhere, but I don't know where they are, but it was just amazing. I mean, they wouldn't let them in the square this time. So they set up all, all their whole partying and, allowed speakers and people speaking and music playing and it was very festive and there's this whole line of of uh stormtrooper guys you know with their shields and the helmets and masks and stuff completely armed and everything but it was peaceful and uh uh it was uh that was something to to be a part of and, mm. uh it was um the whole experience was profound and uh, something I'll never forget. Yeah. You know, what's, what's, uh, I'm kind of going segue here of, of away from, I, I don't like, really like to discuss politics on this podcast, but this film is literally about that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's just one thing I always wonder. Uh, not just in this, in this sense of the uh, film, but in general, like, you know, it's, not to take away killing, but it's one thing to shoot somebody. Not that I have done that or I will ever do that and that I know how that is, but there is that at least that distance. There's not that physical contact between you and that other person. As as tormenting as that may be afterwards, you may have done that. But to physically do something with a knife or a hammer, right, as in one of the scenes, because you're right there and there's that contact that you're making with that person and to do it so casually. I mean, I always wonder how, how, where have you been to become someone like that? Like what happened? I'm not justifying anyone's actions, but like, how do you become someone like that? It's insane. Well, it's uh, a lot of it is hate. And uh, uh, yeah, but still, I, I get it. But at that level, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's um, it's about you know, I I kind of associate this movie with uh, someone who has lost their soul. You know, the, has lost their humanity. Yeah. And you know, the the main character that Dennis plays is you know it, a perfect example of that. But then the examples of that what you see and what other people see and the father and the daughter and, you know, the disowning and, and all of this tragedy that's happening is all based on people just being, uh, um, slowly, uh, losing their humanity and their, their empathy. And it's all about us versus them. And, uh, and that justifies, it becomes a justification in your mind, uh, for these people to do horrible things and and it it went both ways you know it went you know it was it was ethnic upon ethnic and uh you know uh tribal you know tribal areas you know and um and uh tribalism and uh slowly but surely it all ebbs away and it becomes uh animal you know just animalistic and and uh and it is it's a tragedy and it's uh all too common in war and uh and how wars start and how wars continue and how in that case there in the ball in the um in the uh, balkans the uh um uh, this is hundreds and hundreds of years of 
of uh, that tribalism. And um, with a lot of, you know, moments of peace and harmony and all that, and then it, it kind of all breaks down. And that's what, um, that's what uh, the, that uh, the governments and uh, the people were basically giving themselves license to do things that is going back hundreds of years, you know, to settle scores. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's not something that just pops up out of nowhere. You know? Yeah, no, agreed. But having said that, it's one thing when two militaries are fighting each other, right? Like, yeah. But it's another thing to ethnically cleanse mm -hmm. people. It doesn't matter what religion you belong to. It goes in every direction. To ethnically cleanse a group of people and that's the only thing that you're doing. Like you're just literally killing civilians uh, for the sake of hatred. Yeah. Without, unless it's like a collateral damage, like, you know, you, again, that is bad it is, but, you know, you, you fire a missile to a military base and, and there are civilians there and they die. Sure. But how much, how many times can that actually happen? You know, there's other to intentionally kill civilians just because it makes you feel better or superior is just absolutely mind-boggling to me. And it applies to everybody. I'm not talking one side against the other. It's just an yeah. insane thinking. But, you know, anyways, um, uh, going back to the film, one of the things that, aside from the music and everything, the story, you know, I, I was surprised, but I wasn't surprised. I mean, Dennis Quaid is a great actor, but he was really involved in this character. I, I could just see it in his eyes. Were you ever sort of when you were on the set, did you ever come across any scene particularly, whether it was his or anyone else's that were while the filming was going on? Yes, not the um, it was it was more it was like exterior stuff that was um you know, for instance, like when they're uh, when he's, uh, you know, trying to get out of the country, and he mm. you know, ends up at in the on the coast, you know, uh, at, with the baby after, you know, in the right the ending. But um, I saw that, and I saw um, uh, a couple of other scenes that weren't uh, that those cruxes you know those those moments um which is probably a good thing <laughs> yeah um, yeah i uh uh and i you know dennis was definitely uh submersed in that role and uh i you know i met him and we actually became friends uh afterwards and uh uh spent some time together and i ended up doing a, a movie that he starred and directed in for uh, uh cable and um which one was that just out of curiosity it was called everything that rises and it's about uh people in montana this couple in montana and uh their uh their uh struggle and um their son and uh um and it uh it uh you know there were there's there were mo lots of moments of lightness in it but also uh really um serious stuff and but with savior he was yeah he uh i've never seen him in a role like that before and yeah. probably not since but it was uh, just one of those things you know it was uh something that he responded to and wanted to do and uh and he uh invested everything he had in it you know it, it shows yeah true your going back to the music you know we talk about you and i talked about dead man walking and how you brought in um the the late music maestro nusrat Fateh Ali khan from mm -hmm. pakistan and you have this research about the folk music and all that and that was very clear in this too mm -hmm. and you know one of the things that i was wondering um you have a different take with music score. And again, I'm not trying to say anybody else doesn't. Everybody has a different style and approach. I, I, I just, I was wondering when the film ended as, you know, that 
your career has been great, I'm assuming. I mean, you've done some good films, right? But your style of music is not really out there that much. And why do you think that is the case? And you haven't been able to do, uh, you know, again, I'm not trying to draw comparisons. I'm just kind of speaking out loud here. You know, like John Williams or Hans Zimmer, or is it something that people don't understand in terms of your music? Is it totally too different for people to get it? Or is it just your by choice for you, what you want to do in your life, in your career? Or well, maybe I'm completely wrong about all of them. No, it's, uh, it's, it, there's a truth in that. And uh, you have to, it, I guess it goes back to how I got into it in the first place. Um, I wasn't trying to be a film composer. You know, mm. I was a rock and roller and guitar player and um, a little uh, um, uh, unhappy with the th way things were going with that. And I wanted to do something different. And I landed into theater and, and, and found out that I was good at putting music and uh, feeling to uh, uh, live theater and uh, started doing that and uh, really enjoyed it. And it was that the style that uh, really kind of grounded you that the actors did is based on Commedia dell'arte. And uh, it's, it's uh, no fourth wall and uh, um, a lot of improv and uh, workshopping and uh, ensemble work. And it, it was, uh, <laughs> It was just something that I, I you know, I, I enjoyed and and uh, I was just happened to be in the right place at the right time when somebody suggested that I uh, it, it, did she want to let them know if I was interested in doing a score that was they were looking for a composer and it was uh, I said, sure, and it was like Robert Downey Sr. Mm. who was directing this thing, you know, Putney Swope guy. And, uh, um, and, uh, <clears throat> he, uh, uh, it, I did that. It was a comedy <clears throat> and, um, shall we say not really that funny, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I, you know, I basically, uh, you know, did a jazz score and I never written jazz although i was familiar with it you know i'd seen a lot of it and heard and listened to it a lot and uh um just put this jazz score together and it worked well and you know everybody was happy and i said okay i kind of let's see what we can do and uh you know started uh getting things and and then you know that kind of uh ethos that i have and that, that folk origin origin uh, that I come from is, uh, is something that kind of naturally took hold and attracted me. And I, you know, I enjoyed learning about folk music from all over the world because there's a commonality to it. You know, it has its, uh, they have their, um, uh, um, uniqueness in, in the region where they, uh, where that comes from, but it's all the same in that it's a storytelling, simple storytelling with, with mm. words and song. And uh, that is not, you know, that is orally passed down uh, from generation to generation. And uh, I had these opportunities to do these movies uh, and, and really flex that muscle. And um, that's what attracted me. And I don't miss... Uh, not, you know, not going to a level, although, you know, it might have been nice. Who knows? I mean, you know, I was, I guess the closest I got were a couple of movies that, uh, um, that I uh, was up for. It was between me and one other composer and the other composer uh, got it instead. And, and, and that's the way it goes. But I don't regret the the path i took uh at mm -hmm. all i you know yeah i could have worked i i wished i would have worked more but i've i've done you know 50 films over the course of the years and uh that's pretty good it's a good body of work and i'm proud of it there's good. nothing there's no schlock that i i really did you know that i just did for the money you know 
Um, I, uh, I like that. I like the challenge of uh, coming up with something that works, but not in a, not in a typical way. That's what gets my blood going. And uh, that is seen by some people as, you know, they don't, they don't get it or whatever, but there are a certain type of director out there that is confident and knows what they, they want and, or is, 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 a, you know, wants to experiment. And those are the type of directors that I attracted. And, uh, and uh, I, I don't really have any complaints about it. You know, it's, it's just, it's, uh, it, it's, it's happy. It made me happy. And, you know, it's, it's, it's rewarding for me. And that's what counts, I think, rather than being miserable and stuck in a rut, you know, and stuck, you know, okay, you've got to do another score exactly like this last one you did because it was so successful, you know? <laughs> and I'm glad you said that because that's exactly what I was getting at is that, not that there's anything wrong with a certain level of success and fame where people recognize your work, you yeah, know, but, yeah. but at the same time, you know, the grass is green on the, always on the other side. You wonder about, and I'm not just talking about music composers, but anybody in life, when you've got to a certain point, then you may feel that you may have missed on other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like in, in that process of 15, 20 years of getting to where you are, or maybe you have not looked after your health or family spent spending time with family. Um, so in that sense, I think the key is always the journey and wherever you, you as an individual or anyone finds the happiness and that's it. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's all that matters. But I, I, I was just curious because it's not like, you know, if, if I was talking to you for the first time and this is our third time, and if you had done Dead Men Walking and then you wouldn't have done anything else good, you know, for the just for the sake of argument, I would have guessed, okay, that was a fluke. But your work is great. Like your work is really, really great. I mean, I and I'm not just saying that because you're right now I'm talking to you, because it's just it stands on its own, but at the same time it fits with the visuals really, really well. And that's a very difficult thing to do for a soundtrack to live on its own. Mm -hmm. So just just wanted to let you know that it's 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 impeccable work that you have Thank done. You. In... I, I really appreciate it. It means a lot. Yeah, um, in Savior, what you kind of touched upon the folk and you know the two songs that you kind of collaborated on. What other chat? What what was the biggest challenge that you had scoring the film? Whether it was based on um, whether it was based on the story and the visuals and detaching yourself or any other, like just the process itself, what was the biggest challenge that you faced? The challenge is what a lot of what I put on it. Uh, and it's just the way the thing I learned with dead man walking really in, in spades is, is that, uh, when to use silence, you know, when to let silence be you know, trust the drama and, and not put music in for music's sake. Um, and it has to mean something. It has to guide the story. It can't lead it, you know, it can't. Uh, and it's, it's just a matter of, uh, with me, it's just trying things out, you know, just ex having a little time to experiment with it and, and find the tone and find uh, um, where, and it's just, I, I don't know exactly how it all works because it, it kind of, you just are in it and and you find these things, you know, and it's just a matter of um, having a, a, a standard that I put on myself. Um, and uh, it uh, has worked well for me. And, um, I, uh, interesting thing about a challenge <laughs> when we were recording the orchestra, which is the first thing we did, um, you know, we're using every mic cable in the place and stretching them sometimes just so they could reach, you know, cause it's a big studio. 
And, uh, but that was all done. I brought an engineer that I had worked with before from the States and, uh, thank God I did. Um, but, um, the orchestra, uh, it was, the challenge was getting them to play together. Really? You know? Yeah. It was like, they were, it was like this sense that you got that they were all in it for themselves. And it, it was, it comes back, it comes back from the, the Soviet era where nobody took responsibility for anything. And, and uh, they were out for themselves, you know, make themselves look good. And, 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 you know, I got, I had uh, three French horns in this uh, mix and they couldn't, play together and be on pitch together so yeah. we'd always start out we'd do a cue with all three of them when they when it was written that way and uh then we'd kind of take it okay well you sit out and so we're down to two then you sit out and we're down to one <laughs> <laughs> and it happened you know things like that happened uh, there a lot and it was it was so interesting i mean they were great players but they were all you know all mostly familiar with uh playing their classics you know and the classics that they you know the the classical music that they were trained on and that's the way you know they they did things you know and uh, mm. it was very interesting the the folk musicians on the other hand were just all in and uh you know there was one challenge was the flute player Bora, who, like I said, was you know very well known there, and so was Cornel Kovac, and um, he was kind of uh, resistant at first. He was not open at all, and and uh, it was basically he didn't trust me, and uh, and uh, Cornell, you know, talked with him a while, and and. And he couldn't understand why Cornell was was helping me. You know, mm -hmm. why should somebody with that status help me? Uh, and uh, and Cornell so said something that changed the whole uh, vibe. And he said, to learn. And all of a sudden, everything, you know, just kind of, uh, and I was floored by it. And uh and um uh, all you know all of a sudden you know the the whole uh, mood changed and and bora just you know he's this he's a master at the flute he all his flutes comes with this big duffel bag of flutes all handmade by him wow and wow. Uh, and uh i gave him you know he had basic melody but he was to you know play on it and uh and he uh he really did and uh boy it was something and uh you know at the end of the day he uh you know he gave me all his cds he said here please listen please listen <laughs> <laughs> it was great um but you know there were there were it was challenges in that it's it's different than it is here you know it's it's uh culture right not, it's not they're not used to doing that they weren't then uh you know having foreigners come in and and uh hire and for hire you know uh and doing yeah. work for hire and um so it it was uh it was different and it was a, it was a gamble and uh you know we s were stretched thin but it worked you know uh, yeah there was yeah it's one... sorry go on I'm just going to say there was one cue it's the that chase scene with mm. the car and there's this the upbeat dramatic piece that I did that I wrote in a, in a meter that is familiar to um, that, the, uh, the folk music there. And it's this weird meter. I, I don't even remember offhand what it was. It was something like uh, 12, seven or something like that. I don't, I don't remember, but uh, I had, I had this all written and it was great. And the orchestra couldn't play the whole thing. They play. They, I had to have them play it in sections, and uh, and uh, and then uh, piece it together later, 
and had the uh you know i mean the the uh the the the, the the folk musicians handled it great, great, especially the, the percussionist. He was uh, fantastic with it. Uh, but I had to end up uh, piecing parts together uh, in uh, post, you know, uh, afterwards back here. And uh, uh, that was, that was, uh, you know, sweat time. <laughs> <laughs> that was a huge cue. But uh, it worked, you know, I mean, I put it together and uh, um, I had to do a little uh, jimmying, but it, it worked well, you know, it ended up working well. And, um, uh, you know, things like that happened and, and those are the, you know, but in every project, you know, there are something that happens that has to be overcome and uh, it's just part of the part of the gig, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's it's. It's funny you mentioned about the, the orchestra and the cult. Like, there's always in anything in life, there's a cultural difference, and especially in the even though music is such a universal language, but there's still the way the work ethics are so different in Japan versus the former mm -hmm. Soviet Union versus uh, Middle East versus South Asia versus North America. And it's interesting how you bring that element of universal language together, even though it's the same thing, but just from a different work ethic standpoint. I, I always find that interesting and fascinating. Um, my my next uh, kind of talking point slash question is, what, do you remember the first time you saw the complete cut with the music, like mixed, color graded and everything? And if so, do you remember your ex experience after watching the film or your, your mindset? Yeah. It was a uh, it was a while after it was done that I got a chance to see it, you know. But I think it was probably the uh, the first screening with an audience, and uh, mm. uh, I was it was enough time from the time I had finished it and moved on to seeing it again, and it was like being more objective, you know, but more um, subjective. Yeah, you were uh, detached. I was more detached, and uh, you know, and there, and and it really hit me, and I, uh, I was, uh, you know, those emotions that you put down came flooding in, and uh, it, you know, it was more like that experience of uh, seeing it in a, in a way for the first time, even though I'd seen it a thousand times, you know. Yeah. But in a different way, and and. Uh, that was uh probably you know that was another profound thing about that experience that uh made me love what i do you know i mean it was a it was a reaffirmation of that uh i'm i'm doing something good and i you know i'm i'm making a piece of i did a piece of work that in you know when i get detached and and have spent lots of time from seeing something uh and I, I kind of see it new for the first time in a way. It uh, <clears throat> it's really uh, uh, it makes me um, it just makes me happy, you know that that I had a chance to do that, and I don't even rem you know sometimes it amazes me I wrote that. <laughs> it's crazy. It's like yeah. <laughs> holy cow <laughs> i mean and i i truly believe that that element is something that is is uh a universal thing that it is uh, the composer the classical composers back centuries ago never claimed ownership of the music they you know there was no such thing as copyright or you know mm. uh, they they attributed it to god you know god gave me this you know uh i'm a vessel and in my sense in 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 the way i look at it is is it's a universal it's a universe thing you know that once you trust and open yourself to uh what is out there it it will provide and will inspire you 
and uh and you do your work you do the work but you are open to you can't go in having decided what this is going to be right you have to let yeah. it come to you you have to let that that uh speak to you you'll have to let the movie speak to you what do, what does it want you know uh and uh and keep yourself open and and it it uh it will provide the universe will provide i couldn't agree with you more on that i couldn't agree with you more on that um you know the going back just to the last part in the film that i want to sort of just make a comment on the juxtaposition in this film right uh losing somebody and then taking revenge for it and then kind of going back in circle ending up with someone that you don't want to associate yourself with it and then just having that um responsibility like especially in the end mm -hmm. you know when the, the when he's in the the boat and then the cat comes in and then yeah the baby's the baby's not responding and then what follows that and how he breaks down i mean that was just that was such like a sort of like a closure mm -hmm. to his arc, you know, from the very beginning after he loses his family to that point and him being like sort of like a hard boiled, you know, cold hearted individual throughout the film. Yeah. It, it was it was incredible that how a sound of a baby just completely melts you away. Yeah. It's uh, it's that journey that he made from losing his humanity to finding yeah it. yeah it, it's amazing and I, I loved it yeah. I, I mean we can we can talk about it for hours but again loved your music and I, I was trying to find it somewhere on Spotify or Apple and I couldn't at least on Apple I tried I don't know if it's on Spotify is, is it available somewhere online or uh it's it's not released as a score um mm. uh I have seen, um, I mean, people have um, uh, lifted it from the movies in some cases, you know, and and, and it, it kind of appeared that way, you know, but usually mm. with a scene or something, you know, but the, uh, the, uh, the two folk, the, the folk song that's called Rasti Rasti, um, which the uh, quartet sings, uh, as a cappella over the end credits, but also in the movie, I do an arrangement of it for the uh, prisoner exchange, and right. uh, it, that starts off a cappella and then you know grows with a, an orchestra. But that uh, I forgot my what I was going to say, but I, but the uh, the thing about that was. Uh, it was lit it was people love that song you know the 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 uh the people in uh serbia you know that's a huge song for them mm -hmm. and it's uh it's um and they would always that would get lots and lots of requests that still happen today wow you know, about uh do you have that uh do you have that released and i you know i, I unfortunately i don't um but um i uh have used those pieces uh in uh you know like demo reels for for uh putting up what it, what it yeah matter. uh but the interesting story about that song rasti dasti i don't remember the whole title in in the language but uh uh it's a story about uh a husband and a wife and they're planting a tree in their yard because uh, the husband, the legend is the husband is going off to war. And and he goes, after they plant the tree, it grows. And then the, it, the song is a lament and it's the, it's the wife singing, urging the tree to grow, grow, grow. Because when it grows, when it's grown, her husband will return. Mm. And it's just like, when I first heard that in those state radio archives, I had I had no idea what the words were, but the music spoke. Yeah. And it was clear 
just so clear to me and it, it, it's like that's how universal music can be you know in a story that you don't understand a word yet you know what they're talking about you know yeah way. yeah you, you could know, feel it you, you could can feel it feel it and uh and uh you know there that was uh that was really uh that was that favorite piece of folk music from that region and uh um i uh and I'm glad I did. Uh, I'm glad I did those people proud too. I mean, you know, it's 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 a nice, I'm sure. nice feeling. Yeah, no, I'm I'm sure it's awesome. That's great, I man. Could, Thank. Uh, I could probably send you something if you like. Yeah, I would love to. I'd love Download, to. Just so you can hear it in in its, you know, out of context with the movie. Uh, that that'd be great. I appreciate you sharing that. I'll be obviously keeping it to myself. Sure. Not gonna put yeah, it out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but thank you, man. Uh, this has been great. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me again. Uh... I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment. And do come back for another episode. Until then, have a great day.